<laughs> you can come on down. <laughs> We're just getting started. D7 here with Brock Trade. Hello. Kendra, my 15 year old. Almost 16. Yeah. Wow. Right now the logo's going and music. Now we're back. So, okay. <laughs> so, all right, go have fun. I <laughs> love you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> all right, so let's just get busy here. Let's just take a look at the Marcus D7 here with Grok Trey. Grok Trey. And I want to show you something. Let's go with the um, weekly chart first. A weekly chart. We said last week, expect a big up week. Sure enough, we got that big up week. Boom, 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 all the way to the upside. But here's the part I want you guys to see. I have all these trend lines. We I did a 401 uh, mentorship this weekend. I only teach a couple times a year. And, um, and it was great sitting in with all the um, students. These are grad grads. have been through the 301s already. Mentorship and we had three different continents represented, or two, something like that. Um, three different countries, two different continents. And uh, but one of the students goes, "Yeah, I've been watching you for ten plus years." And he goes, you "Used to have very few trend lines. Now your your chart looks like a spider web." <laughs> so Jay, I got you. I got you. He's smiling right now as he's listening to this, but <clears throat> um, for good reason. But let me do this. I'm gonna let me go to a line chart and you see support. Support. See those two? Just focus on this line coming across. It's this line right there. This line. So watch this. I'm going to go back to a candlestick. So it's here, here, and it's there. And the part I want you to see is we had this big up week, but we couldn't keep the big up week. So let me go over here to an arrow. So, I'm, so look at this. We went up, 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 and we hit that trend line, and sellers came in and brought it down, 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 down. <clears throat> that shows a lot of weakness. I don't like the weakness there. It's, it's telling me on the weekly chart in the S&P 500 that we have a really good chance of this being a shoulder, head, and then this coming up, 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 and dropping right here being a shoulder, okay? It'd be head and shoulder trend reversal pattern on the big time frame, okay? So it'd be like this, a head and shoulders. It's almost inevitable we're going to get that head and shoulders. I don't know how it will form exactly, but we will get it, okay? More than likely. Been trading 24 years. This month, 24 years in the live markets using tactical analysis. Have a lot of experience here. <clears throat> and I wish I could say every trade was a winner. It's not. You know, if you can shoot for 60%, win six out of 10 times, as long as you have a reward to risk ratio that's um, sufficient for a 60% win ratio, you'll be just fine in the markets. You'll never have money problems again in your life. But if you're not doing 60% or more with a proper reward to risk ratio, um, you're going to struggle and you will just churn in the markets nonstop. But this is what we're seeing here. We have these support lines all broken. We broke one, two, and three. Now we're coming back up. The chances that this will come back up making new highs are highly unlikely. Just, it's just not likely that we're going uh, to see that anytime soon. So <clears throat> that is something that we need to pay attention to. If you go here to the diamonds, weekly chart, yeah, that does look like a spider web, doesn't it? That's craziness. So we went down resistance, support, resistance, support, resistance, support, acted as perfect support. If you go to a line chart, you'll see it. Resistance, support, support, right there. Go back here. So you got to draw your trend lines correctly. I'm only showing you one of three different trend lines. This is the main trend line. But as long as you get these right, you'll be okay for the most part. You drop, 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 drop. We bounce off of that. And then these lines coming up, <clears throat> we pierce this one. So for that reason, I'm okay with getting rid of that trend line. <coughs> Excuse me. But this trend line is still holding true. Support, support, now resistance. Support, 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 actually, and now resistance on the diamonds. The NASDAQ, uh, the tech stocks, the Qs, um, came down, down, down. We rallied up, and we should have stayed strong. We had a great, last week was amazing last week, but people sold into it. We dropped back down below this major support line. If I go to this, you can see the support we come across. We're below it. That's bad news. This is a bear pullback. Bear pullbacks are not good. So... This tells me we have a lot of a chance of either dropping or chopping sideways here. I just, uh, it's going to be hard to rally north, but it can be done still, okay? All I know is last week when we made these highs, 
sellers came in to drive it back down. So if we try to go up again, will the same thing happen? It may happen again. I'm really setting in these highs, staying below these major moving averages, and that, that would be problematic. Russell's 2000, a lot of times we can get some guidance from the small um, caps. We are way down, 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 down here. That is no good. We're bouncing off of a significant support line. Uh, let me show this to you. Again, this is a weekly chart. If I go way back, this line <clears throat> holds a lot of, I mean, um, this one, what, what line is that? That is, <clears throat> oh, extended right line. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all, all this is here, if I go back to the line chart, we come up. I just wanted to see because I, I see what we're keying on. We're keying on those right there, and I just extended it back to see if and it ran right there. I extended it back to see if it made any. Um, let me do something. I'm gonna go to that one right there. Oh my goodness, yes, that's what we're doing. Look at this major support, a lot of support here. Support, we broke support. Support now is resistance. I know this is small. Uh, you gotta kind of zoom in. Resistance, we drop. Support, support, support. Up, down. Resistance, resistance, resistance. And we blast through it. Okay, so this is a very, very good trend line. That's right where we're at. Right where we're at on the Russell's 2000 IWM, IWM, <clears throat> and that's looking pretty good to me, guys. This says we could get a nice rally to the upside. However, look at the last two weeks. Every time we bounce, we sold into it. We bounce, we sell into it. If this trend line does not hold next week, look for a sizable reach, you know, drop yet again. It could happen right there. Boom, or bam, actually. Mark Meerkat likes to call it bam, bam, bam to the downside, but boom to the upside. <laughs> anyway. I could be dropping. And um, yeah, so very interesting. Financials, I like to go there on the weekly and see what's up. Financials, dead pop, <clears throat> but it kept its gains. So that gives me hope for the market. It's like, wow, if the feds keep pr pumping up this market, we have a chance. But the problem is it's fighting with a major trend line right now, a major trend line. Uh, where was that dude coming from? So right here, support, support. We broke support on the big candlestick and up, yeah. So <clears throat> that could be a nasty little um, drop here, or that could be problematic. That could be on the financials, on the weekly. That could be problematic. Um, if you look here on gold, gold broke down, guys, of this symmetrical triangle. It broke down. Now that trend line's acting as resistance. This is pro this is so so much trouble for gold, guys. This is. Um, we are short city if we stay below this line. However, if we travel back into this apex and we go through the upper side, this would be called a death hook, we'll, and this would be a bullish death hook. This will get really, really bullish to the upside. Um, but it, it's gonna take this broken trend line to heal itself, go back up through the apex and this second trend line, and then release to the upside. But right now the odds I'm going to give a 75% chance that we are now going to drop lower. Silver, let's see what silver's doing. Silver did drop. We have a what's called a descending triangle. It's a flat bottom, a descending top, descending triangle. So this is more bearish and is bullish. Um, I'm not liking um, gold or silver right now at all. Not liking it. U.S. dollar weekly chart went up, 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 up major drop on US dollars. That should have continued higher. We did not, rising wedge. US dollar, if it breaks lower and it looks like it's going to, that is going to help gold and silver in a big way. This US dollar needs to drop for gold and silver to go higher. VIX, had, um, what was our high a couple, two weeks ago, last week, our high was, Almost 40, almost 40. Big drop um, right now at the time of this video, we're sitting around 23. So, um, you know, f f fear quite low at this moment, quite low at this moment. Bitcoin on the weekly chart, down, down, down. There's the hammer, we're bouncing. This is a buy point, look for it to go up. I don't know what we'll do with this trend line if and when it gets up to this trend line. So again, weekly charts <clears throat> that we're looking at. Now I wanna go back to something. 
I showed you the weekly charts on the spider, right? That were up and we could probably do um, sh head and shoulder, trend reversal pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder right here will come up and drop. I don't know how far we'll go up or if we'll stall here or if we'll just bleed up like this and then drop. I just don't see us going higher than this high. I think that a few weeks ago and I said that's probably our high. I don't see that high getting taken out anytime soon. This could just go into a colossal downtrend. You know, so we could turn over here and just start heading down where we'll never get back into these areas anytime soon. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what I'm seeing here. I do like the um, bullish volume though on the spider weekly charts, you know, boom, boom. But a lot of that volume here was sell volume. Anyway, but let me get to my point. My point here is I want to show you the monthly chart. Monthly chart. Now, the month's just getting started here, but I just want to build a major point. The major point is we were going up, up, up. We had bearish divergence on the MACD. We had a bearish divergence on the RSI. Okay, so every um, CRS, C, RSI is dropping, divergence on the 20 um, RSI and the MACD is diverging to the downside. So this drop that we got last month, January, did not surprise us. We go down, 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 but people bought up that weakness back up. And this is where we're sitting right now for this month. I mean, we're only a week in, right? So we're not into this month for, uh, uh, you know, it's just since last Tuesday. So the question is, what's gonna happen? This is all I know is factual is we have a lower high, but we have a big time higher low. We have a much better chance of dropping here than going higher on the monthly. What I do know is this, when we broke that trend line, that was death to this trend. Now, can this rally back up? If it can, we could get this nice two to three week rally back to the upside. But this trend line will more than likely act as resistance. Let me make sure I got that drawn just right. So support, oh, I'm missing it there, I'm missing it there. Hold on, so I've got to tighten this up a little bit, okay? Got to tighten this up. And I'm using TradingView, by the way, guys. TradingView. The links are in this video down below. And if I hit Control, and I, it will snap to those lows. So support, support, support. We go into a rising wedge. You can see the rising wedge there on the monthly chart on the S&P 500. That is problematic. And then we dropped, okay? That drop is the big time, pro big time, big time problem. It broke that that it this is the death knell, if you will. There is nothing that this can do to heal itself. Now, what could happen? The best case bullish thing that could happen. Okay, well, first, anything in the markets can happen, and they will. This could rally straight up and just defy all odds and rally straight north. It could do that. The odds are against that. As a betting man in the markets, <clears throat> I would not put my money on that happening. This could rally up, but this trend line will act as resistance. And this next few months could stay below the trend line and make new market highs. That could happen. But chances are we will not get a close above this trend line. Even if that happens, it'll go like this and then it will drop and that will be the high. I think that the odds are against that. <clears throat> I think that we have a better chance that we might have put in the high already for January, or I'm sorry, February that we're in now, and that this will build out the rest of this candlestick red to the downside. That's what I think the odds are. If I had to gun to my head, I would say there's a good 60, 65% chance that at the end of this month, we will not see this candlestick. We will see one, a red candlestick that'll probably get down, man, I mean, this could get down around 4.30 on the on the uh, monthly. So <clears throat> that's kind of what I'm, on, on the spider, right? Uh, going into March. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. So all in all, that is it. <clears throat> Sorry for the coffee, man. I had the Rona back a couple weeks ago, and if you had the Omicron, it has this crazy cough that stays with you for several weeks. And the more I talk, the more I want to cough. Mm. Man, if you guys don't have one of these, they don't sponsor me, but it's Yeti. And um, it's this, you put Coke cans, you know, I got my soda water in there, and it fits in really, like it just, look at this, it just kind of fits in perfectly. Then you screw this on, it's nice and tight, and it keeps your drinks really cold. 
Hmm. Something that um, Keisha will kill me if I don't bring it up, and I don't even have a link to give you. I don't even have a link, but I should say this. First, I don't know if very many people know this, but I, I'm a moderator for the world's largest, world's largest Facebook cryptocurrency page. And I'm, I've been doing that for years. I've been with them. <clears throat> I'm a large player in the markets on um, cryptocurrency. And um, in, in doing things on the professional side on a, at a much bigger scale. So, so I a lot of people ask me to speak for them. I, I, I speak. Um, I speak to businesses. I speak to investment groups. I speak to whatever. I don't put myself out there saying, hey, hire me to speak. Um, and But people just keep finding me. If I speak at one place, somebody there has me connected with another and I get speaking. And I've been speaking for a lot of real estate groups and um, self-storage. And now, um, oh, I should say this. Um, you can. I'll put the link here. The um, DillMakersGala.com. I'll I'll be the keynote speaker. It's the first time I've been a keynote speaker. <clears throat> I've been on some big stages, but this is uh, you know keynote. <laughs> it's for high net worth individuals. High net worth individuals go bring your spouse or whatever. It's in Cleveland, Ohio next month, March fifth. And hopefully, you know, any of you guys in the area are willing to fly in or whatever. Um, Two-thirds of the people fly into the area. But if you're even in the area or, or want to, you know, go there, go to the website. I there, I have no affiliation. I don't um, I don't get anything for it. But I'd love to meet you. I would. It would be my honor just to have a chance to meet you if you've been watching me for any amount of time at all. So that would be great. Um, and But I will be um, speaking on... Um, cryptocurrency. And what I want to do is kind of do it. It's going to take me two hours to go through everything I want to tell you guys on cryptocurrency. So it's a two hour program. If you want in on the program for Grok Trade, for my people, if you want in on my people, because I want to make sure if I'm hooking everyone else up with the latest and greatest and what they should be looking at and how to look at it and, you know, and to get them kind of even started. Okay, here's ABC. This is how you get started in cryptocurrency. If that is you, especially with these low, low prices, guys, this is buy time. Um, this is this is this is a buy opportunity. But anyway, if you want to um, participate in that, I don't have a link to send to you yet. But send Keisha; she'll love me for this. Send send Keisha, um, um, Grot Girl, the um, saying, "Hey, I'm interested in the cryptocurrency." So uh, I put up her email right here. Okay, using editing magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's our email. Say you want in. And uh, I think we have a date. Oh, my goodness. February 26 for two hours. I can't remember. That's a Saturday. Don't hold me to that. Ask her what the date is and everything. So that's what's going on in my neck of the woods. Yeah, if you want me to speak for you, let me know. I'll speak for you guys. If you have a group, you know, I'll speak for you. And um, happy to do so. Especially if you have some high net worth groups to, uh, to speak with, but it doesn't have to be. Just any groups of investors, whatever you'd have me fly me in, put me in a hotel, wife and I, or whatever, that'd be great. <laughs> mm. So, but that is it. Um, let me think. Is there anything else? I don't write any of this stuff down. I just kind of ad lib, I just go at it. Uh, so, we have. We just got done with the 401, and uh, and oh, <clears throat> everyone can zone out right now. I'm just talking to my 401 class. There was what 10 or 12 of you in that. I just want to say, look at what I said in this video, and pay it. And you know what I was saying. Some of the things that we talked about in great detail on the technical analysis uh, when I talked about where those trend lines and which ones were mattered and which ones didn't. And when we looked at um, divergences and we looked at overbought, oversold, and how those played together on the different time frames, now you're seeing, because I, um, a couple of the people, and this is for everybody, a couple of the people in the class was like, we just want to get in your head on how you were able to call that market top. And I want my students to do better than all the other students out there. I want my, our students to uh, develop faster and be more profitable than all the other students out there. 
So I went to great detail. This is exactly what I was seeing. So it took me, you know, I do a, a 10 minute video, 15 minute video here. Uh, it took me two to three hours to go through everything that I was seeing and how I was seeing it. So they too could be able to pick a top. We don't pick tops or bottoms, but it, it shows you the high probabilities of saying that there's a high probability that this is our high, or this is a high probability that this is our low. So this gives us a sell opportunity or it gives us a buy opportunity. And it's just a game of uh, you know statistics and odds. And um, so that's all we're doing. We're doing the balance of, of data. It's the balance of data um, and it's the collective um, quantitative um, just aggregate of skill with data, skill and data. You put those together, it's almost like art, but but a lot of us are engineer minds, so we need to know what the, that, you know, one equals A, you know, if B happens, then expect D. And we need to understand the technicals that gives us that skill and all we now need is that data. Give us that price, give us that volume. Let's mesh those together and let's stack the odds heavily in our corner. And that's where the money is. Because one thing that's interesting with the markets is money is floating all around us. If you're lucky enough, fortunate enough, blessed enough to be in the United States, money is all around us. You just need to know how to put the net out there and to capture it. So in the markets, you got to put your net out there to capture it. A lot of people are screwing that up, screwing it up. Be disciplined, be emotionally resolved in your trading. And you can only be able to do those two things if you have a, tra a proper trading plan in place. And what is a trading plan? It's your business map. It is how you're going to trade and you don't bastardize it by trying this or that. You engineer guys, I'm one of them. We like to see a problem. We identify problems quickly and we try to fix it by testing, testing, testing. You're to do that, you will bleed your account dry. You need a trading plan that is packed full of trading rules on how you will trade and those rules are only rules. They only go in black and white. They only go in the trading plan if and only if there is a proven track record that that one rule stacks the odds in your favor. Okay. <clears throat> Woo, it's a data dump. I'm throwing it out there. This is the mentor I had. I mean, you know, teaching, hadn't, I haven't taught in a long time because Mark is our grand master mentor teacher. He is a, he's gifted by God himself to be able to keep, teach and coach. We are very fortunate to have him on our team. And But the people that want to say, I, I want to trade full time. Like this is, I have to make this work. Then they go to the more advanced class, the master trader class with me that I only teach a couple times a year. And so um, now that I taught it, I just got done. Yesterday was my last day doing it. I was like, boom, man, I'm like in teaching mode again. I, I love teaching. I love having the time to sit and coach and direct and teach and to say, this is, look at this chart. What do you see? And then I come in and say, this is what I see and why I see this. And then you see these, it's like, wow, yes. So it's changing how you see. In the markets, there's all these setups, there's all these opportunities, but most people will never see them. They don't see them. They don't see the opportunities that are there. They don't see the money floating all around them. They don't see it. It's there. It's there nonetheless. The money is all there, but they fail to see it. They fail to get their net and put it out there and properly capture it and bring it back in. They don't do that. So, you know, I kind of looked at my trading journey as when I first started trading, I, I blew through my first two accounts. I lost my first account, I lost my second account, and my wife's like, man, you need to either quit this expensive hobby <laughs> or get formally educated <laughs> because this isn't working. And I agreed with her, right? So that's, you know, I went and got, uh, found a mentor and did my training and stuff, did all that. But I liken it to, 
Um, if you're a trader right now, and let's say you have not been formally educated, you do not have a mentor, regardless if it's with us or not. Who cares? You know, I, I mean, I care. I'm highly biased. I know that I, we have the best program. I, I don't say that lightly. I mean that factually because of I used to be with all the big groups. I would help them with their curriculums. I took the best mentors, brought them into my company, and we all created what we felt like is the best curriculum. And it now has been evolving for the last 14 years of us in business. I know nobody has our curriculum, okay? But <clears throat> let me get back. I liken it to running in the forest at full speed. So if you're trading out there and you don't have um, education, you are sprinting in the woods in the dark, that was me, sprinting in the woods in the dark. And all of a sudden, I didn't realize I was next to a cliff, and I would fall off. I fell off, I fell off once, lost one account. I'm trading again. This time, I'm sprinting again. <laughs> well, I started off jogging because <laughs> I just lost an account. And I stayed jogging for a long time. Then I started sprinting. I'm in the dark, would run into a tree, a tree, and then fall off a cliff, lost my second account. Oh. What happened with my training, especially when the mentor came in, the, I had two mentors, one for fundamental analysis, one for technical analysis. So I had two, both. I picked my companies fundamentally. I trade them technically. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna buy a stock, I wanna make sure they is the strongest fundamentals or what is fundamentals? Fundamentals is just simply what are the numbers of the business. Does the, does the company have so strong numbers? You know what? What is the um, earnings per share quarter over quarter? What's its, you know, balance sheet showing? What's the peg ratio? Yada yada yada. Okay, it's all that stuff. Meaning, our institutions willing to put money into that company because eighty percent of the market's institutional. So you need to be in a stock that the institutions are buying because if you're in those, when you're in them, they're buying it while you're in it, and you get these rallies that you don't deserve. They just are gifts to, that come to you. Right? It's like, well, I got another two percent gap up today. Oh, that's nice. It's because the institutions are buying it due to the fundies. So what I like to do is pick them fundamentally, trade them technically, okay? So I, I'm all over the place. I get it. I have a bad case of ADD. But, um, I, you know, I trained myself to get back to the point pretty, um, you know, 90% of the time. But here's my point. My point is, once I got mentored, the, the wood started to illuminate. Whoa, I was sprinting, and when the woods illuminated, I saw the logs on the ground that I would trip over. I saw the trees that I would go. I was running into, and then I would, became very cognizant, uh, very aware of this major cliff next to me that I never knew was there. And I caught myself going from a sprint to a jog to a fast walk. So when I traded, I traded with less shares. I traded with far less risk. I earned my right to jog or to and finally sprint in the woods or in trading. I had to earn my right to trade in the live markets to make money. I understood that to a deep intrinsic level. You won't understand that. That will go over everyone's head that um, hasn't had that experience yet, okay? You won't understand that. Anybody that's had formalized trading education will know that their eyes have been open. The woods in which we run illuminates. You see the danger areas. You see the pitfalls. You see the problems, and you know how to navigate around those areas. You know, it's just that's just the reality behind it. It's like flying a plane, right? You go to ground school. You learn all your stuff. And I, because I know a lot of pilots are watching this right now because we have a lot of pilot students for whatever reason. And you finally get to go up with your trainer and you're flying with he or she right there in the cockpit next to you doing your thing. And then you become experienced. The more experienced you are, the more comfortable you are, the more risk, controlled risk that you take and the more joy or benefit you get from that. A lot of similarities between trading and that. Um, you can die you're screwing up trading. You can go poor into the poor house if you um, or flying. You can die trading. You can you know just hurt yourself financially <laughs> really bad. So don't screw up either. How about that? <laughs> How about we don't screw up either of those? <laughs> so <clears throat> but anyway, that's it. Um, a lot of people will come in and um, that you know they'll say, hey. 
man, I, I want to get trained and they'll come in and get trained and um, you can do the small package just to get started and um, and then do the big package that comes with uh, my training and what I uh, bring to you and um, and yeah it's what's nice is we st we stay with you we stay with our students we stay lock and we lock arms with you and stay with you until you make all your money back before you make your tuition back we we want to we're we stay with you and we're there we, we answer emails we do phone calls we do zoom meetings i mean we we're there with you we give you um, software some um to help show us your trade so it's a trade log you'll be sending back to us and we'll be able to hone in quickly on your um, weaknesses so oh man this is me putting on a mentor hat just teaching so anyway most of you guys have zoned out <laughs> so thanks for listening to me drone on and on i love you all i really do i love you all yeah so tampa um is a beautiful area for all of the people in florida i'm really liking tampa my whole family we're like in tampa we're like in florida this is starting to feel like a glove it's starting to feel like home and anyway fun times so there you have it um so just a, a reminder keisha at grocktrade.com uh will if you want to join us for the um, two-hour crypto class and um hope yeah be glad to have you so catch you guys later we'll see you bye <laughs>